What I thought we could do just to kick off is, is if you could spend, I don't know, 30 seconds to a minute telling us a little bit about the businesses you work for and, and a little bit about yourselves, just to give, give a bit of extra background. Um, if, you, if you'd like to start, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, so I work for Acton, who are a marketing automation vendor. Um, and ultimately, marketing automation is about understanding online buyer behavior so that you're better equipped to engage with uh, your target audience. Um, I think we can all agree today that you know, buyers have more control than ever before online. Um, so it's important as organizations that we understand how our buyers want to buy from us, through which channels, so that we can better engage with them and, and ultimately drive uh, more leads for the business and, and revenue, um, increase revenue for the business. So that's a bit about Acton. Great, thank you. Um, Judy, would you like to? Sure. Good afternoon. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Um, so, I work for a company called MailJet. We are an email service provider. Um, we have companies from all over the world, actually 150 countries in the world, send marketing and transactional emails. Uh, we send about 1 billion emails a month, so quite a volume. And we have a lot of data um, from companies from all sizes. Um, we also are about to launch a marketing automation solution pretty soon, um, a basic one, but uh, basically useful. Um, so I'll be talking a little bit about that um, in the uh, digital journey. Thank you. Okay. Hi everybody. Um, I'm Heidi. <coughs> I uh, run marketing for Meltwater uh, for Europe, Middle East and Africa. Um, anyone show of hands? Anyone heard of Meltwater? Oh, hello. Hello people. Hopefully positive experience. Yes, it's fine. It's good. Okay. Um, okay, so basically what Meltwater does, we're the global leaders in online media intelligence. So what that means is we track billions of conversations every day um, and provide our clients with anything they need to know about um, in terms of their brand, their competitors, we need to know about what our competitors are doing, um, uh, maybe products that are being launched, reviews, and um, industry news. Uh, and we do that across online news coverage, uh, broadcast actually, um, and print, and we also uh, cover uh, social media analysis and engagement as well. But our, our strength really lies in the digital uh, sphere um, and the online uh, news and social media. We've got 25,000 clients globally, um, and we have 1,000 employees uh, in 50 offices um, all over the world. Great, thank you. So the theme of our panel today is, can digital stand in splendid isolation? Um, so the first question I've got for, for you guys, and anybody in the audience, I hope panelists won't will, will mind if you guys have anything to say as well, put your hand up and, and, and shout out. Um, but the first question is, what is your top piece of post-digital thinking advice? Um, you know, feel free to... Okay, I'll jump in then with my post-digital uh, advice. I think that um, as marketeers, historically, we uh, relied on um, understanding our customer uh, through lots of physical means, right? So what did it look like? What did market research look like historically? Well, and I remember this, you were given a, a piece of paper with a checkbox where you had to tick the box or we had to cross it if you liked the brand and you didn't like it. Um, and you had kind of uh, market research companies or market research held in uh, uh, kind of rooms with people who had to give that feedback. And I think that um, uh, increasingly what we're seeing is the ability to instantly engage with your audience online um, and be able to just plug in a keyword and then what happens, you can see everything about what people think, what they don't like, what they like, what, you know, what flavour they prefer, you know, how they feel about that new product that you launched. Um, and so I suppose for me, uh, my piece of advice is to listen, I think, uh, because ultimately um, if you are listening, that gives you a lot more power uh, and understanding as to what your customers are saying um, or potential customers or competitors for that matter. Um, uh, and actually one of the interesting things that we've noticed is that uh, going forward um, in the digital space, more and more data from outside of the organisation is being utilised to make decisions. Uh, so historically, again, um, you know, you'd use uh, data types that f to form your decision making uh, from inside, like how, how your sales looked last quarter, you know, what were your events like, you know, let's have a look and analyse how well we did. 
Whereas going forward, you can actually look up, touch, uh, tapping into things like advertising campaigns for your competitors, how well they did. I mean, there's lots of tools um, in terms of optimizing their conversion, how is your conversion rate versus theirs. So I think, um, yeah. Uh, I suppose listening um, and uh, really analysing um, your, your online brand um, and engagement. Great. Um, I would just add to what Heidi has to say. I think that in, in the post-digital world, it is very important for us to think about customer experiences and customer journey from both digital um, online formats, uh, online forms of engagement, as well as physical forms of engagement. They should really complement each other. Um, and digital channels can really enhance the customer experiences in physical um, sense as well. Take the example of Uber. Um, you know, they make uh, ordering a taxi, um, boarding a taxi, and um, you know, paying for the ride a really easy experience with their digital mobile app. Um, you know, you order Uber, you know when uh, the Uber is going to show up and you don't even take out your wallet when you step off the car. But then the physical experience that they provide in the actual ride is consistent as well. It, it provides a very efficient, um, very uh, customer-centric approach and they both enhance each other. So that is how the brand became, became so popular and um, you know, that's how they build loyalty through their customer base as well. So think about all the touch points you can have with customers through online format and through offline um, experiences to help you build better and more personalized customer engagement. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my uh, piece of advice would be um, Meet your buyers online, um, where you know which through which channels they're using. So it's an, an important to understand where your buyers are, through which channels they're using to to better engage with them. Um, but I think before you perhaps invest in digital marketing, it's important to perhaps understand which channels might drive the the best bang for your buck, if you will. And so you know perhaps if you're you know, going back to, um, to work, let me ask a quick question. Show of hands who's using Google Analytics today. Very good, yep, we're using Google Analytics. So, um, when you get back to the office, have a look at the volume of visitors that you're driving to your website today on a monthly basis. And typically you'll see that less than 2% of those website visitors are converting into no inquiries today. And if you look at your bounce rate, so bounce rate meaning those are the people that are coming to your website, to your homepage, perhaps moving away for whatever reason that might be, um, wasn't the type of products or services they were looking for. And typically in B2B, the bounce rate is somewhere between 40 to 60%. So um, just to do the, the maths and keep it nice and simple, let's say you've got 2,000 visitors to your website on a monthly basis, um, less than 2% of those inquiries are converting. Um, if those inquiries are converting um, into your sales team um, and you've got a 50% bounce rate. What about the other 48% that are spending significant time on your website? How are you engaging with them? Um, how are you resonating your messaging through which channels? So perhaps, you know, understanding whether you should be investing in inbound or outbound tactic, marketing tactics or both. Um, so I think that's key really to understand you know, where, where you get the best bang for your buck. That would be my piece of advice. Great, thank you. Um, so, the next question will be, uh, people no longer distinguish between their real world and digital experiences. How can marketers stay ahead of an ever changing <coughs> trend? Um, I think uh, Heidi covered that, listening <laughs> to your customers. Uh, really invest in knowing who your customers are, what their preferences are, how they choose to engage with you online, offline, through what channel, what kind of content they um, react to. So really invest in knowing your customers. I think it's the, the most important thing. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, keep it human. Um, I think it's important, you know, whilst we're in digital, that we are still adding that human element um, to our interactions and engagement. Um, so, so that would be, yeah, that would be the main piece of advice. And I think that 
I mean, I'm being a bit controversial and say, is it important to stay ahead? Is it important to always be the first person? Like, obviously, it's important to be on top of the trend and to ensure that your company is immersed in the trend and is adapting to the trend and is delivering. But, you know, when you're the first person there, and we've seen this a lot in some of the new technologies that are coming out and disruptive technologies, um, if you're the first there, you're also the first to experience the challenges um, and therefore the first to go through that whole, like, okay, how do we figure it out? And sometimes, um, it is good to be aware of, I think, and monitor, uh, but equally to, st to be the first one to always achieve is, is I think, always puts you sometimes a, you know, a, 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 a somewhat of a disadvantage. Of course, it also allows you to be the first to clean up um, with all of the, uh, the leads and revenue as well, for that matter. Um, yeah, I would also say that uh, I agree with what you guys were saying in terms of creating a human experience. If real meets um, uh, the digital, it's the same kind of experience now. We have to provide a real digital voice. Um, so I think translating that into uh, into the, uh, the online world is very important. I think just one thing I'd like to add to that is marketing is all about experimentation, actually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like you have to experiment and invest in what works for you. So to stay ahead of the game, you kind of have to not only analyze what's working and kind of monitor what's working, but also not be afraid to try new things, test everything that you're about to do as opposed to just throw a bunch of money <laughs> in and, and, you know, in one go. So I remember that Don Merch, um, he, um, the social media at Asda, he made a really interesting point and I thought it was so interesting. Um, he said that his customers um, uh, engaging on social media, um, he said that, uh, you know, you could put out a post and you have to run with it and see how it goes, right? So he might put out a post of Wimbledon, for example, and you know the majority of the customers don't react. And then he puts out a picture of uh, baked beans on a jacket potato, like or you know hate, you know love or whatever. Um, and then he had 150,000 tweets about it, or in the next five minutes. So it's understanding that audience, giving them that real experience, but also not trying to falsify, you know, presume that they would enjoy something when they actually really just prefer baked beans uh, and having a conversation about what that image looks like. So I think understanding, analysing, understanding better who your customer is and what they enjoy engaging with so, um, and providing them that human uh, interaction as well is really important. Absolutely, and just to add to that, I'd also say that, you know, think about Coca-Cola and banks, you know, they, uh, they personalise that customer experience. So, you know, when you walk into a shop today, you can get a Coke bottle with your name on it. Um, you know, your banks, you can have, um, you know, personalised photos or greetings on your, on your cash card today. And that's really that personalization, um, you know, is key um, to driving success for your business today. Great, thank you, thank you. Um, so, next question, working in silos is archaic. Um, how have you developed an integrated approach? Uh, yeah, I can go. Uh, so, we off operate across three core disciplines, um, brand, demand and expand. So, you know, uh, driving brand awareness um, and increasing uh, demand through our brand. Um, and ultimately, um, the customer experience. So, you know, uh, making sure those customer relationships continue, you know, past the sales, so post-sales side, um, throughout the customer life cycle. Um, and ultimately about aligning our sales and marketing teams so you know we can help um, our customers throughout that customer life cycle and that's really helped us um, improve the customer experience and, and drive uh, increased revenue through our, our digital marketing channels today i suppose um ah uh, was is more of a startup mentality in a lot of ways so we've seen some things develop and things that we had to change a little bit um, I think that how to operate in, more, in a more integrated way uh, has to do with having shared goals because when you have different goals in different departments running different projects, I've, I've noticed you know you might have one group of people developing exactly the same idea and another one, and if you're not communicating with each other, having shared goals is never going to it's never going to fully work. So shared goals, having a shared purpose, and that want that vision that you're working towards. Um, I think creating that buy-in as well is really important. Uh, you know. Some organisations I've worked with um, have really uh, tried to foster a sense of competition about who's going to get better, whatever, whatever. I think it's coming together as a team um, and really uh, working with each other is really important in, in being successful in an integrated way. 
Um, and of course, like having a roadmap where you have regular check-ins, I mean, all of these basic tactical things that can sometimes get forgotten when you're focused on working on a project and you just want a deliverable within your team. Um, I think coming together, having one key person for each uh, department or area and actually sharing how that's going to work and get, you know, against the different um, departments or, or focus areas is, is super important as well. For us, um, you know, we specialize in email sending and uh, because our solution works for both marketing and transactional emails, we work with a lot of clients who work in silos. Um, so marketing departments are usually responsible for newsletters and promotional emails, and tech departments are usually responsible for sending confirmation emails, password reset, those kind of communication. And, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's always um, uh, enlightening for us to teach our customers that Actually, if you build a cross-functional team that, um, that create communication that's on brand, that's recipient-centric, you will have a much better customer engagement, much better customer retention because the customer knows that a text-based confirmation email um, is, is it's not it's not really memorable compared to a really nicely branded newsletter or promotional emails with uh, the right marketing messages for the right person. So building that cross-functional team um, we see within our customer base, it, it has really helped them uh, increase customer engagement, customer retention, things like that. And then on the other hand, just from speaking from my own experience working at Mailjet, um, I think it's important for, uh, for the leadership to take decisions based on considerations across all channels, across all strategic uh, avenues, whether it's in the marketing sense, it's online, offline. You, you don't create a digital journey for one set of customers and then think about events and focus on offline experience in silo. Mm -hmm. you, you do need to consider what will be the maximum an optimized way to engage with customers through different channels, uh, online or offline, physical or digital. Um, that has to be uh, evaluated as a whole, as opposed to two separate, you know, journeys. Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, in, which new technologies have been most disruptive for marketing in recent years? So. Yeah, I mean, I would say um, account-based marketing um, is certainly a hot topic right now. Uh, predictive analytics and, of course, social media. You know, many of us still struggle today with, you know, which social media channels to use. Um, how do we measure ROI through those social media channels? So, you know, I would say those have been the three most disruptive technologies that I've seen in recent years. Yeah, I was thinking of marketing automation. Yeah. Um, I think, I don't know if you can remember, like, before having marketing automation, the, the roles was the roles very different. Um, and I think uh, a disruptive, gosh, I think the anal anal analytics, rather, um, being able to actually identify not just that the, the customer base is in broadly female and age 45, but actually being able to see what time of day they are engaging on their website and what blog posts that they're really resonating. Um, and, you know, where in the country they're reading and, you know, what, you know, all these different demographics and characteristics that we now have so much insight into who these people are and what they're doing and their behaviour of our audience. So um, I think that's relatively disruptive. But of course mobile, right? And in the three screen, uh, I don't know about you guys, but trying to create that seamless strategy where someone who can look at their mobile also has the same sort of brand experience as they do if they're on their desktop or their tablet or their television or whatever it be. So I think it's a very interesting um, disruption uh, with the, the fact that we've had these different platforms with which to engage with brands. Yeah, I would absolutely agree with both of you guys. Um, I think marketing, marketing automation is probably the, the one thing I would talk about a little bit more because I think that now it's all about personalizing the, the type of content, uh, the delivery time, uh, the delivery channel, that the engagement time that you have with your customers uh, to not only attract them, but to build trust and then build loyalty. So that's, that's what marketing is about, attract them, build trust, and build loyalty. And marketing automation can really personalize those type of engagements um, at each stage of the funnel. Right. Great. Great. Um, are there lessons to be learned from the pre-digital marketing? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I still think, um, you know, the pre-digital the pre era, you know, um, online ads, billboards, radio ads, you know, they all play a pivotal role in your marketing tactics today. Um, you know, they're still very useful marketing tactics, um, but it's just about incorporating, um, you know, your digital marketing tactics as well as your offline tactics. So, you know, I think, um, you know, to, to your points earlier, that it's about complementing one another, and, and this is really what it's all about, is, you know, your offline, pre-digital, uh, post-digital experience, and um, integrating and tying them together to understand your uh, buyer's journeys and, and the customer experience better. I think the goals don't change. Um, in the pre-digital era, we're trying to build relationships with our customers, we're trying to get more repeated purchases, repeated you know, usage, that's still the same. Mm -hmm. It's just the way we execute how we make those things happen, how do we achieve those goals is different. Um, it, I, I agree with what Andrew is saying, it is all about looking at how complement how we can use complementary ways um, to engage with customers through different channels, different um, yeah, tactics. Mm. So I think <clears throat> so I think also, I mean, what this is we learn, hundred percent, I think that relationship building is still so fundamental to um, to our role, mm -hmm. uh, as it always has been. And so yes, we could do a really fantastic email campaign that goes out and it looks beautiful. But ultimately, when you meet someone face to face and you have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, uh, you're much more likely to create that relationship or, or be able to prove something a bit more interesting uh, than just reading an email or having that online digital experience personally. Uh, and we run a lot of events at Beltwater, so um, I'm not sure if any of you guys have been to any of those, but we run um, a business breakfast, a lunch and learn, and people want to touch, they want to come and they want to feel, they want to see the book, and they want to engage with you, and they want to have that chat over the coffee and that sort of thing. And I think that um, providing that uh, relationship building, if we can translate that digitally in some way, if we can keep that human voice, that humor, you know, then, then maybe that, you know, that's a lesson certainly learned, but I think it also, to agree with your points, we still need that, that, uh, the old school a little bit still. You might yeah, great points. Great. So our, our last question um, for, for today is, consumers are now bombarded by marketing messages on a daily basis. How can marketers cut through the noise? So, you know, I think it's important to be uh, witty, creative and strategic um, with, your, um, with your messaging. You know, ensure that you perhaps use video tactics. You know, we're, um, you know we, we love illustration today. So those visuals really help us to, um, to feel um, as if we're part of that experience, you know, to, to help us to buy into that. So, you know, videos I think is a great way today. Um, I only see videos growing and growing. Um, in the digital marketing sphere, and certainly tactics. So, you know, that would be that would be some of my recommendations. I would say that um, video, I totally agree, really, really important, engaging in visual way. Uh, but ultimately, if you see a video last Friday about something, even if it was the funniest, most hilarious thing in the world, you're not going to share it again because you saw it last Friday. So, I think providing something unique that hasn't been seen before. Providing something that um, yeah is is an unusual twist on something is much more likely to create that engagement that we're looking for. Um, and but you know in terms of channels and that's what I agree. Uh, but yeah, I think the, the one if you can find that that viral, what makes something viral, it's probably witty and humorous, but it's also different, right? Yeah. I would say two things: um, be relevant uh, to what your recipients or what your uh, customers are. To, to see what provides value for them, anticipate their demand, anticipate their need, be relevant at the right time. And the second thing is be consistent. So if you consistent, consistently provide a really good experience, really good content, whatever channel is, what it could be a video, it could be a witty joke or something, but as long as you, you're consistent, they will come back to you, they will engage with you, because that's what they can know what to expect from you. So, yeah, be relevant, be consistent. And how to be relevant? Well, it's, again, it's building on those personas. It's understanding who is the person who you have to most engage with. And if it is somebody who is, a, you know, male, 25, then, you know, and loves a certain, I don't know, shop or whatever game, uh, in which case you have to really target your audience a little bit more relevant and personalized. And I think personalized automation is something 
uh, as well. I don't know whether you guys use any personalised automation type um, services, but uh, certainly uh, providing people, sometimes we don't want to be bombarded with the same beautiful message. We want that personal experience. Uh, and so sometimes that text body of an email is much better than the brightly coloured or singing or dancing marketing messaging. And, and I think just to add to that as well, it's important to understand where your buyers are um, in, in the sales cycle. So, you know, if they're top of funnel, think, you know, educational content um, and think about who you're targeting. So, you know, why you're personalizing your messaging, um, you know, based on perhaps traditional demographics. Use that online buyer behavior to make your content far more meaningful and relevant to your target audience. You know, then, of course, you've got far later in the sales cycle. So, you know, what are they interested at that point? Perhaps it's case studies and, you know, pricing pages because of their, they're at the, the key stage of that purchasing decision process. So, you know, I think some of those things that you have to consider um, when, when helping your customers and prospects through the, the journey, that customer journey, that sales cycle. Well, I can share one other thing I just thought um, we had a, a client who um, had seen a rise in the amount of, it was a, a packaging um, of one of their products, a food product, um, and they saw a rise in the amount of people uh, buying this particular product, and so naturally presumed that it was because they, people like the product, right? They like the salad. Um, and so, uh, what we did, I was thinking, like, in terms of understanding your customer that we're talking about, um, by digging in, they were listening on social, we made some really interesting things, and it turned out that actually it was nothing to do with the, product, the salad, it was the packaging that it had come in, because there was a game on the front of it that people could, um, that kids could uh, utilize. And so by, by understanding that part, making it more relevant for that particular audience, and changing that packaging to go on a cross sector of different um, uh, products, they actually increased their, their um, uh, you know, revenues, I guess, across different um, uh, package, uh, products. So sometimes understanding is super important in informing your strategy um, and listening, I guess. Listen. Listen. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for your insights. Um, have we got any questions from, from the audience? I think we've got a question for Judy. Um, Obviously, these days we're all bombarded with email marketing campaigns, like 20, 50 a day, most of which we just skim past. So do you think that there's still a place for your marketing campaigns in the future, or is that going to die out just because everyone ignores it? Actually, email is not going anywhere. Looking at uh, the past uh, statistics, even from like five years ago to a research that was done last year, email is consistently providing the highest ROI for brands. Uh, we're looking at 30 to 40 times return on, say, one pound investment versus 30 to 40 pounds return. Uh, email is still the more the, the most um, relevant way for you to mass personalize communication. So for brands, and you can usually personalize content that will drive conversions. So for example, um, you know, social media feeds, uh, lots of brands use that to promote their products or promote their um, you know, sales or something. But it actually um, you know, goes, it, it's, not, it's not consistent, on, it's not going to stay on the mobile screen all the time. Whereas emails, always in your inbox. I know a brand I love, um, I know I receive an email from them every week, and maybe I don't have time to look at it right away, but I go back to the inbox and I search for that email, and I click on the promotional code to get uh, you know, products. So, um, I mean, email isn't going anywhere, and so as marketers, it's very important for you to understand how to get the most out of email through marketing automation, through better messaging, through A-B testing to optimize the return on your um, call to action. Um, you know, it, it, there are a lot of tools now. Um, actually, we just re we just did a research on marketing automation in the UK. Um, half of the SMBs aren't aware of marketing automation as a tool, and most of them uh, who are aware think that it's too expensive for them. That's not true. There are affordable solutions for you to get to know how to build customized personal, um, personalized journey for your customer base based on the information you collect from them, from your website, from the website visit, from their past purchase behavior, from their engagement with your social channels. You can actually amass a ton of data to be able to set up the relevant workflow for different people. Right. 
Um, so, yeah, as marketers, one of the most important things is master email because it's still the most important channel for you to get. And I mean, just to you know, just to add to that as well. Think of you know, we've all purchased something through Amazon in the past.